I thought I knew what I was doing. I had six years of coding experience. I had created a successful seven figure business already. I consumed all the startup content on YouTube. I knew the advice. I knew the things to avoid, but still had I known how hard it was going to be, how many mistakes I was going to make, would I do it again? It's a good question. If you want to get into building apps, of course, you should be using the latest tools, maybe checking out Cursor AI, staying on top of trends and similar, but there is a lot more that goes into it than just coding. And if you want to do it all by yourself, like me as a solopreneur, you need to have a pretty broad foundation or skill set. If you don't know where to start at all or just want some structure, I can recommend checking out the Solopreneur ebook. I've put it in the description for you to download for free. This is a partnership I'm doing with HubSpot. They're just putting out a lot of great content and this guide covers a ton of topics at a high level everything from finding an idea in the first place to validating it and basically the entire stack of skills you need to bring that idea to life think of it as a jumping off point for marketing sales product development etc before diving deeper my favorite section is the checklist page which you can reference at a high level to make sure you're not missing anything important when you're setting up your business and the competitor research page is cool as well basically it gives you a guide on how to do this so you can identify a gap in the market and potentially build on competitors' weaknesses. Anyway, the Solopreneur ebook, link below, is by HubSpot, which is today's video sponsor, and a big thanks to them for sharing this free guide. In this video, I wanna talk about the landmines that the conventional advice, in my opinion, totally missed. So unexpected things that I ran into in case you've ever thought about building an app, whether you're a programmer or not. We're gonna cover eight things that you need to be aware of, and then if you still wanna do it afterwards, more power to you, go for it. First, just a bit of context. I spent the past year and a half at this point building what was first a Shopify app for influencer marketing. And now we also have a web app for all businesses. So what you can do is you can search for influencers by keywords, find a bunch of people you wanna help promote your product. And you can also see detailed stats, like how many of their followers are fake, what countries are the followers in, what are the genders, so you can make sure it's a good match for your brand. And you don't end up wasting money with people who aren't a good fit, basically. So it's just giving you business insights to do influencer marketing more effectively. So if you or anyone else you know would find this useful, you can check us out at partnerup.net. And I'm also always open to feedback on our landing page on our product if you want to try it out. So let's get into the most difficult things, the landmines that I hit on my way. So the first overarching thing is that all of this advice you're getting has what's known as survivor's bias. So the people giving it had a successful app. You don't really hear from the eight out of 10 people whose app failed as often, or at least it doesn't get as many views. Now success, one might say is overdetermined. So there's so many factors that go into it. The advice may be giving might not work for you because they were in a different market that was just really good. They had a bunch of funding, which you maybe can't replicate. And so if they say, well, this was the biggest factor in our success, even if you do that copy and paste, might not work. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. Now, the most common advice you probably ever hear is you just need to solve a problem well for your customers. But when it comes to solving problems, now there's so many apps out there that every common problem pretty much already has a solution, meaning you are gonna have some competitors. And this is especially the case for simpler ideas. So do you build something more niche with more complexity? or do you build something simple with more competition? This is kind of the spectrum that I ran into. So for example, building a complex Shopify app for influencer marketing, that's more specific, more complicated, but there's also less demand there. Building a broader web app that's much simpler, much easier to use, that has more demand, but it's also a lot more competitive. There's a lot of alternatives. So how do I differentiate? So it's kind of like microeconomics, supply and demand, but the advice of go for a blue ocean, build something completely new. In this day and age, that is much easier said than done. So you just really have to find the balance between specificity and competition. And there's no right or wrong answer here, but I wish I paid a bit more attention to that because I do think having a little bit of competition is okay. I tried to go too specific initially and then the market size was too small. Now the next thing is, well, how do you find that problem in the first place? Well, the advice is just talk to people. Now the issue with this is people aren't always honest. There's something called preference falsification and there's also what people would ideally do versus what they do in practice. So let's start with the first point. People might say all these features they want. Hey, if you just had this, I'll definitely use your app and similar but maybe it's something they don't actually need. It's just an idea that they thought of. Or maybe they say they want this and then they still don't install your app. Both things happen to me. So one thing I built was a landing page for inbound influencers. Let's say traffic on your website, you click a link and then 
it takes people to that page so they can fill out their info and be added to your influencer database. So I built this feature for pretty much just one person. Built all these landing page templates, drag and drop editor. I'm gonna be honest, really good. But this person, they didn't have enough traffic on their website and they weren't really promoting the link. It was just a thing in the footer that people had to find. So I basically built it, they appreciated it, but no one actually used it. Maybe one or two people only. The time it took me to build that was quite long and in the end, it wasn't actually that useful. This is also called feature creep. You just build a bunch of stuff, your app gets more complex, but this set of features people are barely using at all. The other thing that happened quite a lot is people really like the idea in theory. So I would get on calls with Shopify stores. They would say, this is amazing. I'll definitely install it. A lot of them would not install it all, which is fine. But even the people who did, the reality of their work schedule did not permit them to spend enough time to do this effectively. It's also just a tool at the end of the day to do marketing. So if your marketing tactics aren't effective, you are not gonna get the full value out of it. So there's also this skill set you need on top of it. Now that's the reality. People don't have that much time and they need marketing skills, which you don't necessarily have. So the people who actually can end up using it successfully and not canceling, that group is just so much smaller than the initial interest group. And so I really just thought the demand was way higher and it was gonna be way easier than it was. So I had to build in so much support, so much onboarding to help people. But even then, a lot of people, you know, just don't end up using the tool or they can't use it successfully. And that's, I think, just the reality of a lot of SaaS businesses in general. People install it. They like the idea of it. But actually getting it past the finish line, you have to do everything you can to make that easy. And even then, not everyone's going to succeed. A lot of people will cancel after the free trial. And that's just how it is. The next piece of advice, build your MVP as quickly as possible. There's another trade-off here that comes back to that competitiveness thing. If you're building something simple that solves a useful problem, people have almost definitely built it before. So can you build an app in a day that ends up making millions? It's possible, but you have to have something really original, really new. And that's why everyone's trying to jump on AI. They're trying to find these pockets of opportunity. But in established places like CRMs, marketing tools, Unfortunately, you really do have to build something a bit more complex to be competitive because your competitors maybe have millions and millions in funding. The option I went for was building something super complex, but the problem with that was I didn't get customer feedback until six months into development. So I should have launched faster, but it's very hard, easier said than done to do this because if you build something too simple, it won't be useful. And if you build something too complex, it'll take too long to get feedback. So the advice of launch your MVP, ASAP, it's just oversimplified. The next challenging thing, and this is always hard, is sales, specifically the balance in sales between confidence and realism. So if you go into a sales call, trying to get someone to sign up, in one dimension, you have to say, yes, this tool is great, it's the best, we can definitely help you out. That's going to get people across the finish line to try it. But at the same time, you have to say, hey, we're a new app, we're gonna have some bugs, and you have to really strike that balance carefully. Because if people come in and they expect something incredible, like a unicorn level software experience, everything's perfect, then they're gonna be disappointed, maybe leave you a bad review. But if you say, hey, we're new, we're looking for test users, if there's bugs, just let me know. If you say that too much, people just aren't gonna sign up. So through a lot of trial and error, I kind of was able to find that balance, but I had some people in both categories, like people I didn't make confident enough that it was gonna work well, and then on the other side, people with really high expectations, which created, even if they signed up, a lot of support difficulties, they were unhappy. So being too confident about your app, that can create problems for you later by over-promising and let's say under-delivering. And again, there's no easy solution to this other than probably making mistakes and just having honestly some negative experiences. Okay, I also wanna talk about actually building and as a programmer, I started to see really the value of a project manager because what programmers wanna do, they wanna solve interesting problems, use interesting technology, and often the more interesting problems are more challenging, but that actually leads to complexity, which is the opposite in a lot of cases of what you want. So I got way too into just coding mode, and like I said, I built this like landing page editor that was super cool, super fun to build, but first, it was just not a good use of my time. I was deep into this coding space and I did like no marketing for a couple months, because of that. And then also, while I found it user-friendly and intuitive, it was this extra feature that cost people mental bandwidth to learn. It took them time, time which they really didn't have. So 
my coder brain took over too much and I wasn't thinking about the end user experience enough. And usually the more you've coded, the better you are, the more you can fall into this. So it's just so dangerous where you really have to switch that part of your brain off as much as you can. And sometimes the simple things that take you one day to code end up being the most useful. But developing that intuition, this is like for all these things is like there's no easy answer. Maybe I'm being too much of a realist here, but that's really just how it is. Like you have to kind of almost unlearn, you know, the things, your proclivities as a developer, especially if you don't have another person, a PM to keep you in check. The final thing I want to touch on is the goalposts. They keep moving always and always specifically around stress. So when I first launched, I didn't have users. That was stressful, right? Because you're like, did I waste all my time, etc. Then you get a few users and it's even more stressful because now you don't want them to cancel. You want them to have a good experience. They're sending you all these issues with the support. So it's kind of like grass is always greener. You think once you get to this certain point, everything's going to be chill. But the further I kind of progressed, the more stressful it in a way became. So I guess this is really just knowing what you're getting into. Like maybe there is a point in the future where everything's just dialed in, all the bugs are fixed. I hire a couple support people and it's pretty hands off, but I definitely have not hit that point yet. And it's probably gonna take you a lot longer than you think. For all the projects I've done, I have found the launch stage to be the most stressful because you try to get it perfect, Maybe you set a deadline for yourself leading up to that. You're really grinding, trying to fix everything. And then there's still just so many problems that people let you know about. So it feels like embarrassing or you're like, damn, I worked so hard to get these users and I'm just going to lose them because they're disappointed. And that's just like really the growing pain you have to go through, which is just really something to be ready for because no product is going to be perfect on launch. But yeah, the stress this time around with a real like stress tested app that was also complex so many things could go wrong it was a lot more than i was ready for and being in europe time zone there were a lot of nights i was up at 3 a.m on the support chat yeah just coding in the middle of the night it was a bit crazy okay now hope that wasn't too negative of a video i'm really not giving up on this i'm gonna keep it going and if you found this interesting i'll keep sharing my learnings whether it goes well or not because i think not enough people are doing that you know got some food for thought here I also want to say if you want to code an app, if you don't yet know how to code, highly recommend checking out Course Careers. It's a, they have not only AI, but various other software development programs that you can ramp up on and start building cool stuff or get a job and similar. Anyway, that's all for today. I'll see you guys next time.